Great. No problem. Thanks. Let me know. Yeah. Um, so this will be our fourth stream. And uh, the first one got lost in the ether. The other ones are up on YouTube and usually posted to my Twitter. But um, I haven't uh, perfected any of uh, any of the stuff, uh, you know, like bitrate and out of the gate sound levels and stuff like that. Plus today I'm using a headset instead of um, a, you know, a condenser mic or a, a standalone mic. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, no apps at Cali for you. Um, no, uh, I am going to apps at Cali. I'll be there tomorrow. Um, so I have two options. I can do stream tonight and we're going to do, you know, hour, two hours of tool talk and, um, AMA kind of stuff. Um, and then, uh, I can get in my car and drive to LA, which is not too far. Uh, or I could sleep in my own bed <laughs> and, uh, and head down to apps at Cali super early tomorrow morning. I'm not sure. Um, which I'm going to do yet, but uh, uh, we'll see. Yeah, Absec Cali is super cool. It's OWASP, Southern California kind of um, con, and it's uh, it's really nice. It's right on the beach. Um, there's really excellent speakers and trainers associated to it. There's a good community in that LA area, so uh, Absec Cali will be something that uh, I usually don't miss because uh, it's so close and there's no reason to, and I always learn something new. They have a great CTF great organizers, um, used to work with a lot of them. So yeah, cool. Um, yeah. So like I said, tonight we're going to, we're going to do some tools, um, really no specific structure for tonight's stream, right? I was just going to kind of, um, I was just going to kind of do my normal thing, right? So, um, you know, when I was on Ben's stream, uh, earlier, uh, last week, we talked a little bit about like how do I get um, how do I get you know like information or study about new vulns or tools or, or whatever right and I mentioned Twitter right and I just thought I'd highlight you know kind of how I do that right um, it might be easy for some people but some other people might not have built you know this type of feed right so for Twitter for me is not just about like you know having like a brand or whatever or a place to like you know tweet memes and stuff like that or gifs uh but it's it's also about synthesizing information um and for some reason the security industry uh is really present on twitter so um so really what i end up using nowadays is instead of likes i just use twitter bookmarks um and anytime i see anybody who has a new tool or a new technique or a fancy one-liner or a tip and trick or anything related to bounty um what i'm doing is i'm just I'm just grabbing it in bookmarks. Um, so this is my Twitter here that I've opened up. Um, and then I've got, uh, you know, I've got projects I want to check out. Um, so like, uh, I don't know all these people personally, but they're all creating content and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so we'll go through some of these and then some other ones, you know, some I bookmarked here, some other ones that I think might be cool um, that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And we'll just talk about what I look at um, in each tool and how I feel like it fits into recon or testing and, you know, maybe, uh, things that it could do better or not as, you know, or do really well, et cetera. So, um, I thought we'd go over maybe like five of these or 10 of these tonight and check it out. Uh, Jason, do you plan to deliver a session in OWASP Seasides again? I don't think so this year, honestly, my, um, my schedule's super packed for quarter one uh, with work, and um, I'm also going to be speaking at Games Developer Con um, in San Francisco, and then there's RSA as well. So uh, there's just like a lot going on, and um, yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to make it out there. It's still not 100% no, um, but yeah, I'm gonna uh, I gotta check it out. Um, so. As always, I've created kind of a mind mapper graphic, right? And I'm going to try to break out the tools into different domains, right? Um, we'll see how this goes. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's going to be enough room left for for all of this um, to put all of our stuff, but uh, we've already gone over a couple of these, right? So in the early stages of recon, um, you know, doing ASN enumeration, we've already used bgp.he.net. So if you're not familiar with that, you can check. Um, one of the previous streams, we always start with getting our ASN information about a company that we're going to 
hack or do a pen test on or whatever, um, we always start there, right? So uh, there are other sources that you can use to get the ASN data from. So um, Yassine has built a tool here um, and it's called ASN Lookup. And um, here, um, basically, he's going to automate pulling down, uh, pulling down a data source, the MaxMind, um, the MaxMind GeoLite data source for ASNs, and then he's going to um, parse that download. And so you can also export this tool output into. Uh, formats that other tools will use, like Nmap. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't do IPv6. Um, so I haven't used this one before. At least I don't think I have. So we're going to... Let me check my box and just make sure that I haven't used this before, maybe. Let's see. Uh, we're looking at ASN lookup. Mm, no, I don't believe I have. So... Let's grab this and um, see if it'll work. Yeah, this will be, uh, the stream will be recorded. Um, the All my streams are recorded and I, I post them up on YouTube. Um, and the VOD for this will be up on uh, Twitch as well. So uh, YouTube so that people who can't handle the bandwidth restric restrictions or uh, region restrictions that Twitch has, uh, I put it up on YouTube and then um, if you just want to grab it from Twitch, you can do that too. But sometimes you run into like music copyright issues and stuff like that too. So the recording is straight to my computer and then back up to YouTube. All right, so we're gonna grab this here and uh, we'll just make a folder. Uh, actually, we'll just put it in here, so. All right, so we put it in here. Um, all right, let's see what installation looks like here. So I know, I know this tool is cool because right right now we're using, you know, BGP. .he.net, right? And this is a manual workflow, right? And um, you know, so we'll put in like Yahoo or something here and won't get anything back or yeah, we'll get Yahoo back for uh, ASNs and um, we can come here eventually and get to, these are their AS numbers, which represent their networks um, at some point here. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Um, their IPv4 networks, right? Uh, and this is a manual workflow and a lot of people are looking to automate as much of this as possible. And uh, so... You know, at, at this point, we're looking to try to find what Yahoo or any other company that we're um, looking to do security testing on or bug bounty hunting on um, holds. What are their what are their addresses or their hosts? At least the ones that they've told, you know, the registrants about or uh, everybody else about through their autonomous system numbers. So this workflow is manual going to Hurricane Electric, and it would be automated if you could automate against this site, Hurricane Electric, but you can't. Um, Hurricane Electric uses, I think, distill bot protection, and it's pretty hard to get past. Um, so if you're going to do like an all-in-one script and you want to run like a script from your VPS and a chain together a whole bunch of tools like I do, um, you know, and you want to put the ASN enumeration in that workflow, you're going to you're going to have trouble because you can't do the BGP source. So the other source is the, the one that we're associated to this script, ASN lookup, um, called the MaxMind um, database. Uh, so let's check that out real quick. So if you go into here, if you go to the source code for this tool, you can see we're grabbing, um, I think it's a CSV. Yeah, it's a CSV from, um, from MaxMind. Let's copy this. Uh, yeah, so MaxMind is a GeoIP database, which also probably 
aggregates um, ASN information. Now what you're going to lose in doing a tool like this is when I use something like ASN lookup, I'm guessing, um, you're going to lose the flexibility you have in just doing a free text search like you do on BGP, right? Here uh, on bgp.he.net or Hurricane Electric, whatever you call it, I can literally search a keyword and it'll give me anything close to what I want. I'm not sure I'll be able to do the same thing with ASN lookup. I might have to provide it the actual name, like in this case, Oath Holdings Inc. period, um, to get um, to get the correct uh, lookup. But I'm not sure yet. So uh, let's check this out. All right, so let's install our requirements. Cool. Uh, okay, so we have to sign up for an account here. I'll do that off stream. just signing up for a license right now. Give me a second. If you see me looking up, it's because I have a uh, camera up here. Yeah, you guys can ask whatever questions you want. So this is not like a dedicated stream to, you know, just this. If you guys have questions, just uh, throw them in there. I'll try to answer them if I can. I can't guarantee I'll know everything, but... just still creating an account. So I've created an account on MaxMind. And I need a key. So it says uh, grab your key from accounts one. link otherwise doesn't work right Okay, cool. So now we'll need to open config.iy. Uh, Alright, and I will pull this up for a second and put my node key in here. here so we've done that and now let's uh, let's see if it works uh, 
let's go Python dash O. And let's just try a keyword like Tesla. Cool. Um, so yeah, so it did what it said it was going to do, right? It went out, it grabbed with our key, it grabbed the MaxMind um, GeoIP database, which has associated ASN numbers to it. Um, it downloaded them as a CSV with curl, looks like. Uh, and now it's parsing that. And it says the IP address is owned by Tesla the following. And so here we get our ranges and we can start, uh, we can start looking at some of this too. And uh, iDev2000, thanks for the host, man. That's awesome. I don't think I've been hosted before, so that's super cool. Um, get some more people in here. Um, appreciate everyone coming out uh, if it's early or late and, uh, and just chilling with us and uh, trying out some tools and stuff. So this is really cool, right? So instead of using this manual workflow here, um, I can try to use uh, Yasin's script here, which is super cool. So uh, let's see if it matches what we can do here. And what the difference is and you know uh the fidelity i like to say of the data right all right so here's here's a search on hurricane electric on the left hand side for tesla and here's our output for tesla um here on the the tool asn lookup so here's their as number and immediately we can tell that they have multiple different um as numbers associated under different description names tesla motors inc and tesla inc um so let's see if uh, if we have the same ranges associated. So if we go to Tesla Motors and we go to, oh, nope, no associated ranges. Uh, we go to Tesla, let's see. Uh, oh, what am I doing wrong? Let's try AS39, here we go. So here's what we get back for um, for them and let's see how it matches up now 195 96 yeah yeah yes yes cool so it looks to be much of the same um, so uh, yeah so this we could you know kick off a large tool chain of recon stuff uh doing this hey me rob we're um we're just doing some general just uh new tool testing right um so uh first step of recon is uh at least for me is to find the asn numbers of um of a company right mostly to get great high fidelity data use hurricane electric as our source of truth um and uh and so uh, Yasin um, here has built a ASM lookup script quite a while ago, but I had never used it before. So we installed it and we're trying to see, you know, how the data is coming out of this tool. And it looks to be pretty good, right? So, um, you know, for those who are going to make a tool chain to automate, um, we can, uh, uh, we might be able to replace our manual workflow for finding ASN numbers um, with this, right? And they're two different sources. Hurricane Electric manages its own, probably from registrant data in other places. And uh, this one is from uh, MaxMind, which is a company that's doing, I think, web analytics maybe. Um, and uh, this script downloads a CSV of their database and then parses out um, parses out uh, the ranges from that. So. Um, so let's try it on another program, right? Tesla only has two top level organization names um, for an ASN, right? They have Tesla Inc and Tesla Motors. Um, let's see how it does on Yahoo, which is a little bit more obscure uh, because Yahoo is no longer known as Yahoo. It was known as Oath, and then now it's known as Verizon Media. Um, so, like, yeah, I mean, we've done a whole bunch of companies just to see. But if we go Yahoo here, um, there are still autonomous system or autonomous system numbers or um, sets of collections of IPs published under Yahoo. And we can go here. And go to our prefixes, IPv4, um, and then we learn that actually all of these have been uh, basically changed to Oath Holdings. And we can go back into the search and do that. So let's see what happens when we do something like Yahoo here, um, and what, what we get. Guess about right. Okay. 
So lots of ranges. Um, 66 is represented in here. I saw it when I was scrolling up. So if we go back to our wide search on BGP. Hey, uh, J Don Sec. Yeah, the streams are always uploaded to YouTube, usually like four or five days after, because I'll just cut in an intro, um, which I know is corny, but I, I like the interest, and uh, and fix the audio levels, and then I'll put it up online. So, it's so a question from chat. Um, let's see here, uh, or some comments actually. So. Let's see here. Having difficulty with add slashes, filter, no Chinese character bypass, and other alternatives uh, to be able to use uh, quotation mark or backslash. Um, you know, I'm not the XSS guy who's like the crazy filter bypass guy, so that's probably not a question for me. Maybe someone else in chat you know, has a better answer for you there. Character encoding, you know, my, my usage with char character encoding um, and um, and bypasses is usually restricted to localized languages like English. So um, I don't do a lot of fancy bypasses and other character sets. Um, I know people do. I know people have had success with that kind of stuff in the for in the past, but uh, it's not really something I have experience with. Um, <clears throat> Slimbrook uh, says many bug bounties give you a specific scope. Uh, they don't want you walking their IP ranges. Yeah, that's absolutely true, right? That's why we're focusing on Yahoo and Tesla, which um, have great programs that basically um, give you, uh, not carte blanche, but close to ability to test their their infrastructure, especially Yahoo, right? So if you go to Yahoo, I mean, it's no longer Yahoo, it's Verizon Media, but uh, we'll pull it up on Hacker One. Um, there's a clause in the program down here. Uh, lot of text here. If you found a vulnerability that, accept, that affects an asset belonging to Verizon Media but is not included as scope of any other Verizon Media, please report it to this program, right? So with this clause, you know, we have a little bit of leeway on finding a lot of stuff. And if you've talked to the bug betting community or you've been in there with them, um, you'll know. You'll know that uh, uh, Yahoo takes uh, lots of, you know, submissions for old orphan domains and brands they've acquired. They're probably one of the best bug bounty programs in the world, I would say. One of them, um, uh, just by management, pure scope, how much they've worked with the bug bounty community. So, yeah. Cool. So. I don't know if I really feel like cross-referencing all of these IPs to make sure that this data is high fidelity. I'm, I'm willing to say that I know Yassine and his reputation, and I also, you know, I'm looking at this in the first run we did with Tesla and say that this is a good candidate for um, for starting the recon workflow and pulling up ASN. So uh, ASN lookup gets a pretty good stamp of approval, um, and, uh, and you could probably script it in, right? So where I would put this is in the early chain of my automation. And um, if I didn't want to do the uh, bgp.he.net um, search in the browser, and I'd start, uh, I'd start to kick off a you know a bounty where I'd feed it to my script. So if you look at my script that I built, uh, Hunter, right? I just feed it. I just feed Hunter a domain, so I'll just say like uh, Tesla.com, right? And uh, it's using only the referenced, um, it's using only the reference domain here. But now I can, you know, reliably automate um, and add a section here under this and expand the starting criteria for the script. Um, to add our ASN data um, from a tool like this. So it's cool to have command line options because you can stitch them all together. Cool. So what else was on my list to, to check out here? Um, 
so we've done in the past we've done uh crunch main i tried to use this earlier uh doing a who is on the cm cymru.com site um to pull down asn's associated to a web link but it didn't quite work out got here um because i saw this one on twitter too and i'm not sure what the syntax I'm doing wrong here. So make this so it doesn't get blocked off by the Yeah. I tried this a couple times. Um, so I'm not sure what syntax for who is is not working here, right? The, the goal is to use the who is site of cmy.ru inside of a dig command to parse out the ASN number for a single website. I haven't been able to get this to work. So if you've done something like this before um, using that source, uh, someone DM'd it to me and was like, oh, you can do that by doing this. So I don't know exactly what I'm doing wrong there. So we're just going to skip it for right now. Um, let's see here. Uh, question was uh, earlier was um, for small targets, do we need to search for a BGP and doing automation recon uh, as it will have very less subdomains instead of manually doing a work? Yeah, so right on a small project, I don't, you know, I might not need to run my script or automate a whole bunch of stuff, right? It might just be faster to um, to work by hand, right? Um, just depending, right? That's uh, one of my big things, and I talked with Ben about it on the interview we did uh, on the weekend, and it was like, some things are just better done by hand if it's smaller or whatever. So, uh, you know, it's, it's up to you. Um, I will run my tool chain, uh, Hunter, across, you know, pretty much the start of every program, but uh, if it's so small, you know, like Hunter doesn't give me a ton of value, right? I just skip straight to the hacking the website part, so. Um... Python or Bash, which do you prefer? I prefer Bash, uh, just because when I did OSCP, it taught me how to use Bash better. And um, and uh, I just never left, right? Bash allows me to stitch together any language, whereas Python makes that cumbersome. So if there's a tool in Go, or there's a tool in Python, or if there's a tool in whatever, you know, Rust, or I don't know, anything, um, I can always script them together and get them to work the way I want in Bash. So I focus my energy on uh, writing my tool sets and my tool chains in, in Bash. So, um, As a beginner, the programs I get uh, are heavily tested by best hackers and I end up getting nothing. This makes, uh, fee, it makes me feel like giving up sometimes. How do I deal with this? Ooh, that's a... Uh, a hard one right so there's been a lot of people who have this problem right and um yeah i mean public programs have been looked at by a lot of people i know because i've worked for a bug bounty company before and i've been doing this for a long time there's always bugs right or you know i've been doing pen testing too for 15 years there's always always bugs um so yeah i mean it, it sucks to feel like you're you're late to the party, right? Um, and that stuff is being looked for, but it's mostly the obvious stuff that's being looked for, right? Like cross-site scripting on, you know, forms that are accessible to the internet or search fields or things like that, or, um, you know, like really simple, easy, low value stuff. Those are the bugs that, yeah, sure, they'll be, they'll be found right away in the beginning of a program. But, uh, you know, stuff that lies behind the authentication of the page or, you know, stuff that relies with the web service or the API or anything that gets more deep into the application, you know, bugs that are located there, even easy bug classes like cross-site scripting, not to say that that's easy, but even classes like that will still exist uh, for a long time. I remember, um, I remember a couple of programs that had been running for years and we had a new tester at BugCrowd who came on um, never had heard of them before and found like 12 public facing cross site scripting bugs that just either were regressions or brand new um, that no one had ever found before. So there's always bugs. So, yeah. Um, 
Cool. So I know one of the ones I wanted to show was uh, Turbo Intruder. I know that, um, you know, there's like another phase over here. I don't know if it's six or seven, but eventually you get to content discovery in your workflow. Um, and content discovery, a lot of people are using a few different tools, right? So Fuff is one which I want to demo today. Um, another one is Turbo Intruder. In burp, and then my fallback is uh, is dirt search. Um, cool. So I wrote those down. All right. Again, so you know the way I keep in the know is usually Twitter, right? And what I'm doing is uh, is on my Twitter. Anytime anyone is talking about bug bounty. I'm usually spending about 10 hours a week just being like, oh, okay, someone's posted some stuff or I follow them or something, you know. And so here we have, um, you know, someone on Twitter who said they um, they built a checklist, right, which I'm guessing is Markdown for recon. So I'll spend some time to synthesize this uh, and see, see where we're at. Yeah, I've used GoBuster in the past. It's fast. Um, I believe that Fuff is better at the moment. Um, uh, but we'll we'll check it out so okay so uh so this is just like a you know a checklist uh workflow uh in markdown which has got a lot of the things that uh have come from a lot of the really famous people who are creating content and methodologies on uh on this so this could be cool like if you want you know like a a methodology or whatever um Let's see here. So Rob posted um, a tweet that I bookmarked um, about exposure patterns of AWS um, sites. Uh, so this is pretty cool. Um, misconfigurations that has exposed your CNAME patterns um, for IoT devices, for Kafka. Um, it just gives us kind of the naming conventions uh, of most uh, most of these types of servers, which actually I wasn't super aware of, so I bookmarked this. And then eventually I'll get down here, uh, Somdev, uh, who's, uh, who I just started following recently, um, uh, built a cores tool. So uh, I will check this out. So cores is getting into the actual like application hacking, I'd say like maybe step six somewhere down here, and I'll just say, um, app testing and in here I'll put um, cores and then we'll have we'll probably do some research on like what tools you know will give us cores information so and what they do so uh, so cores is a lightweight program that scans for misconfiguration and cores implementations um, so things like uh, wildcard value uh, let's see here Um, pre-domain bypass, post-domain bypass, backtick bypass. That's pretty cool. I have actually not found a ton of cores misconfigurations. Um, so this one's interesting to me to just learn from the tool itself and kind of the way people are looking for cores issues. So we can grab, grab this. That's not right. How's the stream quality, like the clarity? I see someone said bitrate in here. And uh, can you guys see the stream all right? Like the text and everything? Is it all right? The URLs are a bit small. I'll just try to zoom in on everything. Uh, okay. So Corzy. Let's grab it. Clone or download. Grab the link. And... Alright. 
go into the directory. Um, install the requirements. Okay, it looks like we have all of the requirements already installed. Is this is this song from Rocky? Is this song in the background playing sound clips from Rocky? That's pretty pog. That's awesome. <laughs> um, cool. Let's check out usage real quick. All right, so it's pretty simple. Python three corsi, and then uh, we'll give it a site. Uh, let's just check Tesla, see what comes back for Tesla. Remember, I'm going through these newly just like you guys are, um, just trying to evaluate some cool stuff that's out there. Um, and then basically make commentary around whether I think, you know, like I would integrate it into my testing workflow. Uh, cores. Core stuff does not even really enter my brain a lot of the time when I'm doing bounty work. So, um, so this might be good, might be bad. Um, let's see here, some more questions from chat while this thing's running. So, uh, do you dig up GitHub repos and old versions of apps for exposed secrets? If yes, any particular tool that you can share? I know Truffle Hog, uh, where you find more bounties. Um, and where do you find more bounties, apps, or GitHub? Oh, that's a that's a great question, actually, Arlo uh, under underscore C. Um, so, uh, do I dig up old GitHub repos and old versions of apps for exposed secrets? So, I don't find verbatim source code a lot um, posted on uh, on sites, and um, so that makes it. Uh, that makes it a little difficult. Um, like, you know, if like Tesla built an app, they're not going to host the whole source code on there. And they're especially probably not going to host a version of the source code that has hard coded keys in it. That, that would, that nowadays would probably not happen. Um, but um, what I find a lot is developers um, have personal GitHub accounts where they've, uh, they've synced to GitHub their, bash history or their um, configuration files for these projects. And um, and so I find a lot of stuff there, right? So if I go to my gist, uh, gist or gist, is it gist with the G or gist on GitHub? Um, if I go to my gist, um, I put one up, oh boy. Um, uh, this was when I did uh, Ben's stream last week. Let's see how this looks on stream, if it's big enough. I don't know if you guys can read this, but I'll try to make it bigger. Or I'll make it uh, fit the screen. Okay, so this is from actually from my Hunter script, which is written in Bash, right? And what we have here is um, these are the search queries that I am generating for the domain when I run Hunter, right? Because the first thing that my script does is uh, does the subdomain, it kicks off the subdomain enumeration part and uh, that's running mascan, um, sorry, not mascan. Uh, it's running amas, uh, dir search. <laughs> Man, it's late guys, sorry. Uh, it's running, it's running uh, masdns, amas, and subfinder to find subdomains based on a, the domain I give it, right? So uh, when I start it, right, I just said Hunter. Oh, wait, that's not the right host. Lol. Uh, we're like 163. Cool. So when I run Hunter, my tool chain, I just give it like Tesla.com, right? So it'll start running 
Uh, it'll start running its stuff on tesla.com, doing subdomain enumeration on tesla.com using those three tools that I mentioned. Um, and while that's running, there's a lot of stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff basically I'm waiting on. Uh, so to fill that time in my workflow, I generate these links here, um, which you can find it's a public gist. Um, so I generate that name, tesla.com, gets filled in here, where the variable is uh, sign one, and it makes a search query for tesla.com. And then um, it's looking as type code. So basically all you have to do is be logged in and then uh, you can click on these links out of the terminal and it'll take you and you can start searching for source code. So we did this earlier um, in one of the streams, but I'll show it again, right? So if I kick off my script, it starts off, uh, it starts off all the stuff uh, and then it builds these links, right? Like I just showed you. So it stuffs, it stuffs tesla.com in here um, and I can grab this and this is just searching uh, Tesla GitHub for uh, Tesla.com mentioned as a domain. So I can go anywhere here. And then here are all the code references on GitHub that mention Tesla.com. Now Tesla is huge, so it's going to have a lot of people. We identified in the Tesla stream that this data is not going to be high fidelity. Uh, because there's a lot of people modding their own Tesla cars and stuff like that. So a lot of people are going to be linking the Tesla domain and source code for 80 billion random reasons. This one actually is a bug bounty hunter who has uh, random Robbie, who's super cool, um, who's doing bug bounty scans. And it's the first thing that showed up in the code results because he's probably crawling HTML. And the domain was referenced in there. Um, so what we looked for, what the search query looked for was just Tesla.com in quotes and password. And so I have a whole bunch of those that are generated for different keywords, right? So, and these are taken out of tools like Truffle Hog. They're the ones I find most successful. But what I don't find is a lot of the organizations actually leaking stuff like that. What it is, is it's developers who work at Tesla or some other place like that, or Yahoo, um, that have accidentally synced this thing into their private accounts. So using Truffle Hog against the Tesla organization is not going to find me very much, right? The, what I find mostly is private people. Um, doing this type of stuff. Uh, Git Rob is the same deal, right? You have to point it at a repo of someone. And um, so with these wide-based searches, I can find developers who belong to the organization that haven't actually associated themselves to the organization and have leaked passwords. It's usually how I find, um, usually how I find bugs. So I'm not looking at people or the org. I'm just looking at the search terms and the associated domain, and that'll lead me to people who have not connected to the org and have had leaked sensitive data. There's a really good uh, Bug Crowd University um, video. If I could type. Um, by the gentleman. And it's all about finding secrets. Let me see if uh, it's still up. Um, GitHub Recon and Sensitive Data Exposure Model. Uh, so this video is super sweet. Um, I'll post it in the chat. Um, he talks a lot about um, tools and techniques for doing um, finding sensitive data and stuff like that. And uh, and you can probably learn a lot more from uh, from this. Cool. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got from chat? Uh... So someone, uh, Arlo, quoted that uh, Z Shano, um, pretty famous hunter, right? Uh, he made a tweet the other day, and he said, uh, or earlier today, or maybe yesterday, I can't remember, that uh, him and another bounty hunter had been working on the same program for a year and had once never been duplicated, right? To kind of show, illustrate that there's always bugs, and um, that's that's absolutely correct, right? There's always bugs. Everyone is, you know, has a different skill set. Everyone's better at something or worse at something, and that's cool. Like. Um, so it's, uh, you know, just because a po program has been out for a long time or public, I wouldn't let it stop you. If you're not finding stuff and you're, you're still putting your all into it, you know, might behoove you to slow down and focus maybe on a couple of vulnerability classes that you think that you've got a better than standard knowledge of and just dive deep into those and maybe try to search for those few vulnerability classes. 
um, also might help just to get to um, the point where you're hacking with a group and they can help you out. And there's a lot of bug bounty teams spinning up or, uh, you know, for bug bounty scopes to get together and share data. And that could be an easy way to kind of um, get in and find stuff. But um, like Mason Hack is a um, guy that follows me and is a, is pretty cool. Um, and, you know, I've been watching his journey um, in, you know, basically not finding anything into finally having some luck, right, with some persistence. And so you can, you know, like I was reading his tweets when he first, you know, started and it was like, it was like, oh, I can't find anything. And, you know, you immerse yourself. And then finally, like, uh, you know, it starts to find stuff like SSRF. And he found, you know, uh, I think a SQL injection at one point. And um, so, yeah, so uh, totally possible uh, to do it. You know, I just need a little help and spend a little bit more time. Don't give up. Uh, let's go back to bookmarks. Let's see here. So Truffle Hog and GitHub uh, for GitHub secrets, right? So Truffle Hog, again, we'll just, you know, since we referenced it, speaking about it. Of course, I've heard of Truffle Hog. Um, so the fingerprints are, are, you know, probably some of them are included in the patterns for Truffle Hog, right? Uh, let's see here. So, but the thing about Truffle Hog is you have to point it to a rep uh, to a, a repo, right? Like, it's not going to search widely GitHub's, uh, you know, whole code base for references to the site you're trying to hack, right? You have to point it somewhere. So, um, yeah. Uh, so maybe if you do have an organization that's posting large pieces of code, or you find eventually one developer who has source code posted, then you would use Truffle Hog on that um, and try to find stuff. The, the power of these tools also is they parse the GitHub commits and history logs so that you can uh, you can look in the history in case they like once committed something and then accidentally removed it, like a key or, or something sensitive. Uh, all right. Let's see if that cores tool finished. It did not. Something's not working correctly. See the source code. Okie dokie. Pretty sure I have those installed. URL parse, creating a user agent. Okay. Let's just make sure we're hitting the right domain. Yeah, tesla.com should work. Maybe because I didn't reference it with the dub dub dub. Oh, pip three. Derp. Derp. Let's see if that works. Okay. Try to install the requirements the right way. And it's recursive, right? See, when people stream, you get the unedited version of their command line failure sometimes. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. So 
somebody posted uh hetero uh wait he troublemaker <laughs> uh posted a list of all of uh an article talking about all of the github tools that exist i haven't seen this one before Git history, I've heard of that. Git pillage, heard of that. Again, you have to reference the, I mean, this is for Git, right? So you would give it a URL for a Git repo, not necessarily it's hosted on GitHub, but Git. Uh, GitHub contributors, this is cool. Um, I've never used this before, but to get contributors to a repo from the API and their name could be useful in finding other users on GitHub that might have um, pulled out or uh, might have exposed private data. So that's that's pretty cool. I haven't used that one before. Uh... So here's the GitHub dorks, right? This is exactly what I've been working on um, probably the same kind of search uh, search stuff. So there's a Python script called GitHub dorks to do it. I'm guessing you just, do you pass it a user or um, we'll do that for GitHub rate limit. So yeah, GitHub does have a rate limit to do this kind of stuff. Okay, users. Helps if you have links to the tools. What am I missing? Yeah, I don't see this linked, but let's look. Uh, get up and get up dorks, PHP. Yeah, exactly this, exactly a lot of the same stuff that I'm looking for. Um, Maybe more though. Okay, so use the Python tool, uh, add your user token. Description of the checks. So this is a good place for you guys to check out, right? So um, this one actually has a description and, and so does so does some of the other GitHub tools, right? But this has a table that actually tell you what you're trying to find here and why it's sensitive, right? A lot of people use these tools and they have no idea why they're looking for these things. Uh, if you're, and if you haven't been like a system administrator or someone who's worked with private keys before or Docker, or like some of these technologies or whatever, like this is kind of nice to have this table to know of configuration stuff to look for. Um, so this is cool. So this will just, I'll just dump this into my bookmarks bar and parse it later. Like um, this is awesome information could update some of my stuff with it. There's many more signatures. Super cool. Get employees. Um, try to find accounts of employees. See what the output looks like. So this is what the output looks like here. Uh... Thanks for the follows, everyone. Appreciate it. Just getting started with the streaming stuff, so um, appreciate the follows and those who sub and or uh, those who donate and stuff like that. It's super cool of you. Really appreciate it. Uh, cool. So this you can give a keyword um, looking for PayPal developer and it will give you back names of possible people and then uh, and then their possible GitHub names and then the organizations that they're associated to, and then their email addresses, possibly. 
That's pretty pog. That's pretty great. So this article has a collection of these tools for GitHub enumeration. Um, now, will I fold these into my verbatim like script to start everything off? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. So like, um, this is pretty deep diving on the GitHub stuff. With my links that I generate with, this still isn't working by the way. Uh, with my links that I generate with Hunter here, um, I'll have to get an indication of, I think that there's some developers out there that have leaked some stuff before I jump down that rabbit hole of like using those tools. Um, but there's a lot of cool information in that link, a lot of cool tools. All right. Um, so in our uh, kind of workflow here, we've done ASN enumeration. We looked, we looked at ASN lookup last Last couple of weeks, we've already done Crunchbase. Um, just, you know, when you're looking for acquisitions based on recon also, the you know, I know it's probably um, plain to understand, but I'll just say, so you can also just use Google, right? So, um, so Tesla acquisition, if I can spell it right. So you could just search for Tesla acquisition on Google right and then crunchbase is obviously going to be the place that is kind of the holy grail for all that information but you'll get like news um you know here 121 2020 this is very new maxwell uh electric there's some uh you know so there's some new companies that are going to be folded into tesla and you know it might be time to start looking at that um you can also just go to like the wikipedia articles and sometimes they'll have uh, they'll have information on acquisitions, uh, history, facilities, partners, lawsuits, acquisitions. Here we go. So you know, Wikipedia editors are like you know crazy about keeping Wikipedia updated. So here you'll you'll have. Uh, you, know, you might have a pretty well updated list of acquired companies for uh, for your target. All right. Um, let's look at the questions here in chat. Could you tell us a little bit about your preferred method to find cloud buckets? Um, so Arlo, I I guess if I'm just honest, like I do have some methods. I'm not sure if they're super relevant. Um, uh, as Amazon and the maturity of cloud stuff um, progresses, a lot of the bugs that we used to find, like open buckets are getting nuked, right? Um, so it's not a bug class I really prioritize a lot, uh, but it still happens every once in a while, right? There's still are open buckets with uh, um, with stuff, right? Uh, so I'd like to make like a stream where I review just those tools and I have time to prepare and I'll just like benchmark the tools and um, and you know to find buckets first is like identification, second is testing for permissions on those and all the cloud infrastructure. So. Um, not this stream, but maybe in a future stream we'll do one about like the cloud stuff. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, so use this as an opportunity for an AMA, guys. If you just want to ask questions, it's cool. Um, so when we have a target, do I need to look for a specific bug type or move on to look for all bugs while browsing a target? Which, um, whichever is applicable. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know, like it, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere, right? So like, you're not gonna know all bug classes immediately. So you probably are, you need to focus on a couple that you think you've got a handle on and look for those and then build out your body of knowledge and then look for more, right? It's, it's really hard to find anything when you're just new at everything, right? So find a couple bugs that you think you have a good understanding about and look for those across a whole bunch of programs and then 
um, and then add another bug class and then add another bug class and uh, eventually you know you'll have a great body of knowledge to build upon all right so um, we're gonna move over to the life cycle right so we looked at ASN enumeration acquisition just techniques subdomain enumeration I'm pretty sure this has been covered in depth like a lot right um, I mean it's it's obvious I've, I've said it very uh, a lot but AMAS is my preferred enumeration tool right um, and then subfinder is my secondary and then uh, mass DNS is my third right now subdom a mass is scripting although it can do brute force as well subfinder I'm sorry, scripting is not the word. I'm uh, scraping. Um, AMAS is using scraping techniques. Subfinder is also using scraping techniques. And MAS DNS is pretty much a distributed brute forcer. Um, so these three in conjunction can give you a really good, um, a really good feeling for uh, subdomains of a, you know, of a root domain. Um, so if you want to get started, and I'm going to do a whole thing on AMAS, um, you can uh, you can look at my best buddy in the world, Daniel Niesler. If I could spell his name. Um, he did a whole blog post here on syntax and usage for AMAS. We're also both uh, kind of attached to the project. We'd, we'd like it a lot and you know talk about it a lot. So Dan has this blog on... Uh, AMAS, I'll post it in there, in chat, um, and he just goes over everything that it's trying to do, right? These are all the sources AMAS scrapes from. Um, it can do other things other than scraping. It can do uh, zone transfers, DNS sweeping, brute force as well, um, alteration and permutation scanning. Uh, it can do everything related to subdomain enumeration or even domain enumeration inside of the AMAS tool suite. But for what I use it for and, and what I think it's best for is the scraping, right? Where it's going out to these sources here, Ask, Baidu, Bing, Common Crawl, DNS Dumpster, etc. And it's going out and pulling subdomains from, from these uh, sources. Um, and these are these are also other sources that it can pull in, but that require a API key to do so. So um, and some of these as well, web archives. Um, so Dan's got a great whole study page on AMS. Um, Dan's also a recon head like me, um, has built some great tools uh, in the recon space before. And so, um, you know, if you're looking for, you know, a quick, uh, uh, a quick introduction, I would, I would check out AMS uh, for, or this guide for AMS. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see here. Hi, Rintox. Uh, let's see here. Do you update your resolvers for mass DNS? Um, yeah, so every once in a while I update my resolvers. There is a script to go get out to go get fresh resolvers um, for mass DNS, right? Because uh, mass DNS is uh, another tool that we mentioned. Uh, mass DNS is the brute forcer that we use. I'm still benchmarking whether mass DNS is now f if it's faster and better. Than, um, than using AMAS's distributed brute forcing because AMAS took that paradigm and folded it into AMAS. So um, if any of you have any you know anecdotal data on like for DNS brute force, if that's uh, if it's better and I should just appreciate mass DNS, I'm still gonna research it myself. But um, yeah, I want to check it out. So uh, mass DNS um, is a distributed brute forcer written in C. It's really fast. Um, it utilizes um, uh, to do the brute forcing uh, subroot, which is an old school tool um, that uh, we've been using for a long time. Um, and so basically you pipe, uh, you pipe subroots uh, resolving into mass DNS and then it distributes it distributes that DNS brute forcing over a whole bunch of DNS resolvers. And then we'll give you back the results. Uh, 
And so this is what I'm using on the back end to pull back for the brute force. Like I said, maybe depreciated by um, a mass at some point. Um, do I use a mass for just passive scanning or do I use the brute force module too? Well, I kind of talked about that, right? So I use mass DNS to do the brute force module, um, but I do do brute forcing, right? And um, that is also on my, uh, just my list of what I'm looking for, for subdomains. is here it's huge um, it's a huge list of possible subdomains but it's everything that ever existed um, so all of the DNS uh, all of the DNS tool the enumeration tools that have existed in the past 10 years um, things like fierce things like subroot you know like tens hundreds of them not even hundreds but like i think when i did this research maybe 50 existed 50 different tools to do subdomain brute forcing and they all had different lists so i just took their lists and concatenated them and then put them into this and this is what i run through uh uh through uh mass dns to do the brute forcing now some of this stuff is never ever going to hit right but with a tool like uh mass dns um, it's distributing it across multiple DNS servers. Um, the more DNS servers you have, the better uh, the better it's going to be. So probably not going to set up too many alarms. There's not a lot of risk in feeding a large list to a tool that's doing brute forcing. So I don't feel like um, it's a lot of wasted time. I mean, maybe, maybe the list, because it's so large, is, uh, you know, it'll take me on a, on a big domain or, you know, uh, the subdomain enumeration probably will take me 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. Um, and that's not an unacceptable uh, thing for me, right? So the old all.txt was uh, was smaller. The new one is much larger because I integrated data from some of the other bounty hunters in their list. So this is an old screenshot, but, uh, but yeah, you can use that list um, to do your brute forcing. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the comments in there was uh, Travis CI finding uh, basically logs of Travis CI. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I've heard of that one before. Uh, no. Here's Ed's article right here. So Ed did some research on um, CI services, continuous integration services, not just Travis CI, but Circle and GitLab, uh, and about those services leaking private build information and potentially keys. Um, uh, and um, it's really, really, really fucking good. And I can tell you for a fact that bounty hunters are using this method. Um, I don't know if now people are starting to move over. There's actually a team that did this research for Justin Gardner, Corbin Leo, Ed Overflow, uh, Kareem, Streak, Donut, um, and all of the team at BBAC. That's a bug bounty team called BBAC. I actually don't know what the acronym stands for. Um, uh, ran, ran through this research, but super cool article. I'll post it in chat. Um, All right, so uh, so a mass subfinder and mass DNS. I won't bore you with running those, right? Um, or maybe I'll do like some dedicated stuff later on. But uh, let's move on to content discovery. Once we land on a site, what we're doing, um, uh, what we're doing to find basically to do directory brute force and things like that. So uh, the three tools that I'm using right now are Fuff, Turbo, Intruder, and Dirt Search, right? And this is why I re-up the Bug Hunters methodology every year because my tool chain changes, right? It's like, never stays the same. So let's see if I have, I don't know if I have it on this box. Yeah, so here's my script going through Tesla, right? And building, building links for Tesla. I'll just let it finish, that's fine. Uh, All right, I'm about to give up on Corzy. Um, so, I didn't 
all here. Yeah, we did. Okay. All right. So Fuff is a new directory brute forcing tool. Um, not new. I wouldn't say it's like relatively new, but it's, you know, last year, right? Pretty cool. Uh, 15 months commit date. Um, so uh, it's written in Go, right? Which a lot of new tools are being written in uh, stable, fast, uh, relatively easy to code in. Um, yeah, just uh, just fast is probably the the main feature of writing a security tool in Go. That's why many of the older tools that existed in the pen test scene and the bug bounty scene before are getting ports of like their same name but in Go, right? So uh, Go Buster replaced Dir Buster. Um, Fuff now kind of is trying to get in on that action here. Um, so uh, pretty easy, fuff plus uh, dash w to your word list, and then target to fuzz. Uh, let's see here, you can download a pre-built binary. So all you really have to do is have go installed and then have a pre-built binary for you to use. Uh, let's see here. So you can also do virtual host discovery, which is kind of cool. You can fuzz parameter names um, my biggest issue with Fuff was that it didn't do um, recursion, right? Which Dir Search does. So Dir Search was my go-to tool for a long time, and it didn't do recursion. Meaning, you know, um, uh, you know, if I have like a URL that's like. Uh, I'll just say like, stick with Tesla, right? Slash admin. And then, so if I have like a URL or if I'm like starting to do content discovery on just the root with one of these tools, right? It's gonna start adding a whole bunch of stuff here until it hits something. And it's gonna tell me that, hey, this returned like a 304 or a 400 or hey luckily we hit a 200 on the sensitive directory right and it's going to stop there but what i actually want these tools to do is for identified domains that give us response code other than 200 i also want it to fuzz here and then if it finds something there i also want to fuzz here um and uh so not all of the directory brute forcing tools support with recursive brute forcing um, and so this didn't, um, this didn't support it, but it was really fast. So I liked it for this first level of brute forcing, um, this like finding this level. Um, but it sucked because if I want to do more, I have to feed it to something like Dirt Search. And having two tools in my chain sucks. Uh, I'd rather have one that's good. Um, so um, I am looking through this because I've heard that recently they've added recursion. Uh, let's see. Follow redirects. Discovery. I don't see. I swear someone told me that they added recursion really recently. Let's look in the issues. Yeah, so they have added recursion. And they should be just like dash R. You can just always go to the source. Yep, so... They added it. It's just dash dash recursion, I think. Cool. Um, so I probably have an old version that doesn't have that.
Uh, okay. Cool. All right. I'm going to take a tiny break. I'm going to pause. Uh, I need to hit up the restroom, so <laughs> cut this part off on YouTube. But um, just take like a you know, two-minute breather. I'll be right back. Um, let's see here. Yep. Uh, so here is a tweet by uh, Gwendol Le Kugik. I, horrible pronouncing name. I'm so sorry. Um, this guy's actually a ninja. I follow his tweets and he's always tweeting bug bounty tips and command line tips and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so... Um, so you can do multiple hosts, um, through this, uh, let's see here. Mode cluster bomb. So you can feed it multiple hosts in one run, which is cool. You can spray your directory brute force, your content discovery across a list of hosts, which is useful in automation instead of having to script up an instance of this tool once each time. Um, I'm looking for recursion for brute force. It is written in. Uh, somewhere. Recursion. Yeah, it's dash recursion. Cool. 
cool. So I just downloaded the new version of it. I'll replace it in my core uh, workflow later. I have an old version installed, old binary. All right, so let's see what happens. Uh, we're going to make it H. Okay, so we need a dash U. We need to give it a word list, right? W is the string we're looking for. Just make it. Um, my directory brute forcing list. Uh, what am I using? It's a great question. Um, is there something on my I guess? I mean, I know I have one on my box. I don't know if I've ever. I think I've published it before. God, you never know. Uh, let's see here. So, So this is the DNS. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this is my list for content discovery. This is an old version, right? On my box, I have an updated version where I pruned out all of the junk from this because content discovery as opposed to DNS brute forcing requires an HTTP request for every one of these. So I wanna prune down this list as much as possible. But um, I did start from this list and I add to this list so it can be a good baseline for people who uh, who want it. So I took this again from all the tools and all the research data that had been kind of happening in the content discovery domain, all the tools that were existing, um, my personal lists, and uh, and I built this from, from that. Now this was a long time ago. I've since updated my list, but you can uh, make a baseline with, with something like this, right? This has all the stuff from, it has all the paths from Durbuster and from Durbel and from like all of these tools, Derby, and all of these tools that have lists to do content discovery or directory brute forcing, right? The same name for the thing, right? Content discovery or directory brute forcing, we're talking about the same thing here. Um, so, uh, let's see here. I think I keep it in, I think I've kept my word list in Dir search. So I'm gonna take this off screen for just a moment and make sure I don't disclose any of my private program testing. <laughs> uh, and just uh, find the, the list. Oh boy. Um, okay, so uh, let me go back here and answer a question while I'm doing this too. So, um, Turbo Intruder, yeah, I'll demo it in a second. Uh, did you answer a question on query, uh, early query on preferred bug classes got disconnected? Uh, let me go back up real quick. Uh, my preferred bug classes for me are access control issues, right? Um, and they're found through this workflow, directory brute forcing and mapping an application. Um, so invariably, they will have left some directory or something open, and I will directory brute force and find it. Um, or they will have installed some COT software, in which case I will install it on my own box, map out the directory structure, and replay the directory structure of 
which should be only accessible to an admin of the COTS software um, on their site to see and make sure that they've added all the configurations that keep me out of those, uh, those places. Um, so yeah, uh, those are a majority of my, I, I find a decent amount of cross-site scripting for me. I found a decent amount of um, other access control issues, IDOR, uh, not really big on SSRF. Um, so like still trying to learn some of those and get better at them. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? I mean, I could, I could look at my history on the other monitor and, and see, right. Uh, a fair amount of SQL injection on old stuff, right? Like when I was growing up as a pen tester at Redspin and HP, um, it was the heyday still of SQL injection, like, well, right after the heyday. So there was still a lot of SQL injection. So I'm decent at SQL injection um, across a lot of different platforms. Um, and when a new variant comes out for, uh, you know, a new code base or framework or whatever, um, I can usually get with that pretty quickly. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, mostly access control bugs, cross-site scripting, injection bugs. Um, I did do, uh, I did target um, a lot of uh, SSTI when that bug was new, but not anymore because most of the templating framework, so uh, server-side template injection is, an, is a bug there. Um, and a lot of the frameworks have by default, you know, tried to mitigate people making those mistakes of template injection. But when the heyday, when that was around, um, I was doing a lot of template injection. Um, you know, I got in on the same a lot of same stuff that a lot of other bounty hunters did, like bad Amazon bucket configuration, like that. That has died down as well, uh, but uh, it's also you know was something I had to get good at finding buckets and permissions and and stuff like that. Um, you know, just to keep myself honest, uh, you know, I have I have the bug hunters methodology, and then you also have like you know, the Web Location Hackers Handbook methodology. And here's Dan's site once again. And like, you know, this is, you know, whenever I land on the actual site, I'm trying to eyeball this methodology, just making sure I'm covering it all, right? Like um, map all the visible content, discover hidden default, look for debug parameters, um, you know, test all of the password functions, right? Um, these lists, these resources and methodologies, Dan and I have been making these for years and have our own and, um, you know, it serves as a reminder for me not to forget bug classes. Uh, and even if I'm horrible at, let, let's say I was horrible at SQL injection, um, you know, like at least I still try and I try to get better. And what I do is I'll take this as a checklist and, um, and, uh, and I'll go through it on a pen test or you know, a bug bounty, right? And some of it's not applicable for the technologies I'm testing or whatever, but some of it is. And I feel better about myself at the end of the day when I've gone through, you know, uh, a methodology for testing some of this stuff. Now, this doesn't talk about any of the actual methods, right? Like this is parsed from the Web Application Hackers Handbook and their methodology. It's, you know, been a long time um, since the publishing that book. There's new error codes. So, you know, I have versions of this, checklists that have a whole different sections and have changed some of this stuff so um yeah it's uh but it's good to have a methodology so that you don't forget to do stuff because i will absolutely forget to do stuff sometimes all right uh okay so i posted this and then i was looking for uh word list uh, root tools. Go search that one here. Uh, do Uh, can I share my methodology list? Um, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, eventually I am. So that's the, it's the whole premise, right? So, um, of the talk that I do is to kind of 
add iteratively and um there's two options right the the talk that i do the bug hunters methodology is like usually the new stuff that has come out in the last year either vulnerability classes that people are looking for or um uh sorry should i do two things at once here um or updates to uh updates to that checklist right um and i used to have it all on github but it just got depreciated right like you know sometimes you just can't keep up with uh uh with uh updating a project like that i have no problem sharing it i know there's some bug classes that i have been let in on by other bounty hunters um who i have friendships with i just have to make sure that some of those things are like cool to disclose right like you know, let's just be honest here, guys. Like, like the Travis CI stuff that Ed Overflow wrote about, and this was already three or four months ago that he wrote this article. It was in 2019. This stuff was being submitted months before this article, right? They will, you know, you, when you find a new bug class um, for this kind of stuff, uh, it's going to, you know, before it makes it out to the public, it'll, you know, it'll permeate the bounties uh, for a while, usually like six to eight months um and they're very you know testers who find cool stuff like this they're willing to share with some other testers you know trade techniques tips um but uh you know they're not going to publish it publicly until they're really ready um usually the flow is you find something new that's really cool or you build a cool tool that no one else has built yet that really gives you an advantage you'll sit on it for six months submit it to everything um try to make as much money off it as possible. Uh, and then then you'll write a big disclosure blog like this to get some fame out of it, right? Um, to get some like, you know, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, fame, I guess is the right word. Um, and then you'll post it. You'll post it out there and then you'll post your tool. And that's kind of the, the pattern you'll see with some of this stuff. Uh, not everyone does it like that. Some people go straight to just releasing it for the greater good, um, but a lot of people um, do it that way um, because like that's your research that's your time you took to find that thing and that's totally a valid valid thing to want to protect right you put a lot of time into finding these things and etc so um, yeah um, so mine my checklist is markdown it's in Evernote um, yeah I'll try to I'll try to clean it up and post it at some point I don't have any problem with that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know when TM, you know, soon TM, but, uh, yeah. Okay. So I found, I think I found my, uh, my word list. So I think it's at, and I'll bring this down. I'll bring the terminal down in a second. Root tools, dir search. I think it's alt, right? Yeah, it is. So hopefully this should work. All right, so uh, we're just running the new version. So, you know, it's not like installed in the word, you know, in Go, but um, go run main go dash U for, we're running Fuff, right? The new version on Tesla. Um, w is our, um, is where our word list is. Oops. Okay. I don't know why I double copied it, but that happened. Okay. And then now we want dash recursive as well. I think. Let's see how that goes. Uh oh. W. What does the flag W do? I did that. Maybe I didn't do that right. Wordless file, path, and optional custom fuzz keyword. Did 
Can I not do that? Yeah, I just tried to delete. Yeah, I realized I wrote go run twice. Um, but that should be better. Word list. File path. Oh. Like that. So you have to add fuzz? Nope. Yeah, see, I haven't used this enough to, yeah. Flag not defined recursive. I'll just do dash R. Okay. There we go. Hopefully, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Success. Yeah, figuring out a new tool for the first time is fun, right? I have used fluff a couple times, but not the recursion flag that much, so. Um, so yeah, here we go. All right. So here we're getting, um, output, some output. Let me go to the man page for the tool as well. <laughs> I just took a screenshot to avoid your pain. Yeah, no, that's uh learn from, learn from the mistakes, right? This is the this is the tester life, right? The the using tools and like, like let's let's be honest here, right? Like, uh, how much pain did I have when I first got used to installing Go tools? Oh my God! Like the Go environment just didn't connect in my brain very well. Um, so yeah, like you just play with it until it works. <laughs> if you get real frustrated, you submit an issue and like try not to be a noob. I mean. There's no magic in, like, nobody goes into these tools because you didn't write them and is just, like, an expert or, yeah, I'm going to use the flux capacitor command and just, like, you know, do the thing. No, you stumble through. You get, like, 5 to 15 errors, and then you're like, oh, yeah, this is the way they want me to format this. These are the flags, like, blah, 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 you know, so, um, yeah. Um, so I don't think I need the the fuzz prefix. Um, so I'm going to kill this real quick. I'll background it, it's fine. I actually don't think I need this fuzz here. I'm not sure though, let's see. Because it might be trying to, no, nope, I think I did need that fuzz there. Liar, liar. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, so I don't actually want to fuzz Tesla right now. Uh, <laughs> so like, uh, you know, I guess maybe I'll leave this running, but uh, yeah. So that's uh, what we're doing. Now with these tools, right, you have a lot of options, right? We're doing recursive brute forcing and we're also matching or we're asking it to print the status of anything that comes back as 200, 204, 301, 302, HTTP status codes that match these, right? Now what will happen is, um, especially when you use like Dir Search or some of the other tools like this, is you just start getting spammed with output because you'll get a default application response, um, like 401. And uh, you'll have to quit the tool and then filter out that response code because you don't want to see just a page of 401s, you want to filter it out from the output. Um, so I think you have that option here. Um, you can filter out by um, only showing the response codes you want. You can match a regex. You can do a lot of powerful things for the filtering in Fuff, um, which is awesome, right? You want one of these tools, one of these directory reinforcing tools to have a lot of options to parse the output or alert on what you want. Um, so uh, that's one of the reasons I really like Fuff. Other, it's written in Go, it's stable, it's, um, it's fast, right? 
Um, but now we're going to show, you know, while Fuff is going, we're also going to show, um, we'll show uh, another content discovery or directory brute force tool, which is Turbo Intruder, if I can get it to work. So, um, so Turbo Intruder is not a command line tool. It's a burp uh, plugin, not installed by default. And, um, but same thing we're trying to do here is brute force um, stuff. You will know that I have not updated. This is on purpose. Um, so one of the workflows I do for Recon, which is called Link Discovery, it's in our past stream, where I use the Burp Spider to find more websites to attack uh, on a wide scope program, um, does not work in 2.0. So I stay on 1.7, as well as I find the spider in 2.0, just not to be to my liking. I don't know what it is about it. It just doesn't, doesn't do the right things for me, guys. Um, so uh, I'm missing some scanner checks. I will do the scans in a you know run of 2.0 in the the new whatever. But um, for a lot of things, I stick in the old the old version. Uh, so take that for what you will. It might just be me being dumb. You never know. But uh, yeah. So here's Burp. Um, so let's open up a browser profile that we can funnel through burp, which could be this one, I think. Yep, this one can go through burp. Cool, so you, on the left-hand side, I have just a browser funneling through burp. You can see that it's already picked up um, requests and drop all those. And we'll just put in tesla.com. And we'll unintercept. Cool. Here you can see that traffic is flowing. Um, yes, I know my. No, keep changes. Okay. Traffic is flowing. We're getting visited stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's just limit down our scope for right now. We'll add Tesla to scope. We'll say yes. And then uh, we will show only in scope items. Cool. So there's Tesla. You know, a lot of linked, a lot of, you know, some visited stuff in black that we've already seen by just visiting the home page. A lot of um, unlinked stuff, references, probably in JavaScript or source, HTML source code, stuff like that. Um, so if we want to do this directory brute forcing on Tesla.com using Turbo Intruder, this is, this is how we do it. So um, first, um, you're going to go to uh, Extender, um, and you're going to add Turbo Intruder from uh, from the B app store. So it's down here. Uh, Turbo Intruder, right? And you'll just click install. Um, it's a, I believe it's a Java based extension. Let's just confirm. Um, yeah. Uh, no, it's a, it's a Jython extension. So I might have I might have had to load up my Jython environment here. So you'll have to make sure that you have uh, Jython, the Jython standalone binary somewhere. It's a jar, so you download it from the internet uh, from Jython's website, and then point burp to it. So when it tries to run this extension, um, Java running Python is it works. Um, so that's in your option settings. So I have set it to where I have my my Jython file, and so this should work now. All right, so now inside here, I should be able just to right click and send a turbo intruder uh, on any root domain. And here is the um, the very probably hard to read. Uh, boy, let me see if I can make the text bigger. Hold on. Options. I don't know if the text options will extend to a Jython, Jython plugin. Let's see. Display. Let's turn it up to 32. Nimbus is fine. Message display. We'll turn up to uh, 24. Uh, all right. Cool. And then exit. Oh, that's big. Oh yeah, that 
that's that's real big. Okay, so let's repeat our process here, get some traffic flowing through. We've got Tesla. We'll add that to scope. We will hide out of scope. We'll show only in scope items and let's send this to Turbo Intruder. I think that made it a little bigger. Right? Cool. All right. So what this is, is this is a turbo intruder here is a, is a window for your brute force. And so since we want to brute force off the main routes, tesla.com slash whatever, this is, it loads, <laughs> it loads, <laughs> thanks, thanks Rob. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it loads the request for the root in the top window, right? The raw request. So here it is. Just get slash for tesla.com, right? Um, so, you know, the baseline the baseline way this works is that it's a Python script using a different type of directory brute forcing called HTTP pipelining. Instead of opening multiple HTTP requests, it'll open one HTTP request and funnel through requests through that one. Um, so, <clears throat> so this default run of it works for almost all cases, right? To just do directory brute force. So what you'll have to change about it in this is you have to add your payload marker here and it's there's no add payload marker like you would use in regular intruder so you have to use a python marker so here it's percent s um, for where you want to add the value of your fuzzing list and then you have to add the location of your directory um your uh, directory list here on this line here so for word in open and you have to put the path of your thing. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, and should, cross my fingers, work. So and then you'll have to drag this window down. And I don't know. This is where the output will come. Yeah. I mean, it's working. I don't know. If, you know, this is the main Tesla site. Not, not guaranteed to find anything. Um... So here you can see down the status of the tool. So uh, let me bring it up so that my face isn't in the way of everything. Oh boy. All right, there we go. Okay. So up at the top, you have your base request. Here you have the responses, um, which if you drill down on any one of them, it will give you just like intruder, the raw request and response um, of what came back. Um, you can also filter this. Um, you can click these headers here. So if you want to see all the 200s, I think it by default filters by or uh, organizes by status code. So I'm looking at all 200s right here um, from this list. Or now I'm looking at 404s. Now I'm looking at 200s, etc. Right? Um, you can also filter by the words on the return of the HTML page, the byte length, and the time to return. Um, so these are all useful type of general. Um, intruder type rows that you use to interpret data when you're running an intruder attack. So you can see we're, we're 330 requests, we're queued 100, we're at 86 seconds, we're using five concurrent connections inside of our HTT pipelining, we have zero fails, um, and uh, it just kind of gives you like a status overview. Um, you can see how fast it's working. Um, now, in order to, in order, if you wanted to make this even, um, in order to make this even faster, you would edit that um, you would edit that connection uh, or that Python snippet in the beginning. So let's halt here and go back to configure. And so here is where you can edit that. So concurrent connections, HTTP requests were at five, and then inside of our HTTP connection, we're pipelining a hundred uh, hundred requests. And actually, in this version, I actually didn't have pipelining turned on. So that's true. And let's like bump that up. So let's say we want to do a concurrent 10 connections and request per connections. I'll keep that 100. I feel like that's a stable number and let's reload. So look at how much faster that went. Um, we're killing it right now, guys. We're about to get banned from, from Tesla. So. Um, so 500, 600, 700 concurrent connections. Um, so this is the power of Turbo Intruder and HTTP pipelining for um, this workflow. The problem is, is that um, for most people, this is more of a manual workflow than something you can script up on the command line. That you can instrument Turbo Intruder from the command line, 
I haven't done it yet. So maybe for the next stream, we'll try to um, set that up um, to instrument uh, VPS to headless burp to do Turbo Intruder. I think there's a standalone Turbo Intruder Python script as well. So maybe we don't even need burp, um, but uh, but yeah. So um, so this is this is Turbo Intruder. Pretty simple. Uh, you know, the one that got me in the beginning was, uh, you know, you have to put your percent %s up here. That's your new payload marker in Python. And then you have to edit those configuration settings uh, in, the, in the small Python snippet in the config. Um, it's so much faster than anything else that exists. So, so I'll halt. Um, okay, so let's, let's go back to questions, right? So, uh, <laughs> update this burp, please. No, never, never, never. Um, great stream tonight. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Just trying to bring out quality content. Hope you guys like it. Uh, how exactly does HTT pipelining help? You know, I'm not a technical expert on it, and I'm not going to pretend that I am. Um, what you'll want to do is go watch a couple of talks. So, uh, Turbo Intruder. Um, the original blog was on Portswigger, um, where he talked about it, and then he came to level up and did his talk at Bug Crowd, um, the, the Bug Hunters Conference, and did this did a demo for us. Um, so I'll post this here. Um, so he has a better explanation of um, of the pipelining. Um, yeah. So uh, you can also do some filtering in Turbo Intruder, but it requires you to do some Python to, to edit that Python, Python conf configuration. Um, the default script that is loaded is in the port swigger Turbo Intruder uh, repo. Um, there's other examples for using Turbo Intruder um, inside of here. So if you go to resources examples, um, these are other ways to uh, use Intruder, including scanning multiple parameters to do a race condition benchmark um, to check for rate limit or to rate limit your your scans to use a special word list to use a time to do timing attacks. These all should have to add multiple hosts to Turbo Intruder. Um, so these are all these Python config snippets. Uh, so you can. Uh, yeah, so this one's to use multiple parameters. You can see that um, you'll probably set the new Python mar markers percent %s in, um, as part of a parameter. And then this section here will, uh, will try to add uh, the payload values in your list to multiple places. So yeah, so uh, James, James is a genius, um, just and a, and a good guy, really I haven't actually met any bad guys in, in Bug Bounty. Um, there's a couple J Haddix haters out there, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, James is awesome. Any research he releases is just amazing. So I I recommend you watch that talk, play around with Intruder. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, I think that we're at 11 and um, probably going to wrap up uh, for tonight. Um, so we went over quite a few tools, some worked, some didn't. Um, so what I'm going to do in the future is I'm going to do these streams, um, and we'll do, we'll try to do, um, one and one, right? We'll do one that's, uh, one that's targeting, you know, a bounty program that's public that hopefully has open scope. We'll use these tools on a public site, et cetera, and we'll try to do recon. Um, which a lot of other content creators are doing. So that's cool. You'll get a good exposure to Recon and um, and then some of the other tools. Um, and then other days we'll, we'll do like tool time. I th I'm thinking of calling the segment tool time if you ever watched uh, that show, uh, Home Improvement. It was a really bad 80s show, which I'm probably dating myself with. But uh, um, yeah, we'll take a category of tools or just some new tools or anything. So if you guys want to just DM me on Twitch or on Twitter, um, you know, if you want to go over something and talk about it, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll check it out. So, um, cool guys, um, guys and gals, I appreciate you coming out tonight. Um, I'll be at AppSec Cali tomorrow. If any of you 
are around. I'll be roaming. And um, yeah, I like the streaming. I'm going to try to do it two times a week. I have a crazy work schedule. So I don't know you know, if I'm always going to get to it. And you, that's evident by the fact that over the holiday breaks, I didn't, I wasn't around. I didn't get to stream as much as I wanted to at all. Um, so I'm just going to do my best and I'll keep releasing stream times on Twitter and uh, I'll keep releasing videos on Twitter and um, really appreciate uh, everybody coming by. So, all right, everyone. Goodbye. Have a good night. Have a good morning. Have a good day. Happy hacking. I really wish the best to all of you. And uh, I'll see you soon. I'll talk to you later. Good night.